Today we are going to talk a little bit about wet sanding. We're going to give a bit of a better explanation and demonstration video for you guys today on how to go about doing so. What we have here is a freshly painted car. Uh, it was done about uh, back in June of this year. So of course what we have here is a car that has two coats of clear and it is riddled in orange peel. A bit wavy. Actually it's not too bad. I've uh, I painted cars where there's been a lot more orange peel in the in the clear, but uh, this car turned out not too bad. Uh, it depends on which angle you look at it. Still got a nice glossy shine appearance to it, which is what you want. This panel has already been treated. It's been wet sanded with 2,000 grit sandpaper. I'll show you the sandpaper in a minute, and um, along with the back door, the driver's door, this quarter panel or fender has not been touched. We take a look. We take a look at the truck in the reflection. Kind of looks a little wavy and hazy. Take a look in the door. Nice crystal clean finish. Uh, nice and uh, shiny. No edges. No rough lines. That's kind of what we're trying to aim for. So I'm going to uh, give you guys a little bit of a demonstration on how to correct this issue. And uh, so if you know you decide to paint your own car, well. You know, you're going to know what to expect. So what I got here is a few bonnets. Okay, now you take these, you go to your auto parts store, you're looking at about $25 for a bonnet. This bonnet here, I, over the years of me doing this, being in the auto body kind of trade, so to speak, I've been doing it um, uh, not as a, uh, a career choice, but kind of just as a personal hobby. But having great friends that are in the auto body trade, um, I can tell you that this kind of bonnet really is not something that should be used. I have used them. The only thing about this particular bonnet is that I find, in my opinion, is that it will leave swirl marks. But it can also leave the potential for some scratches. So what I use, this is a 7 inch bonnet. This one here is a lot finer. I'm going to bring it over into the light. I'm going to set them down gently. This here is a lot finer. And I've used this bonnet opposed to this one. You can kind of tell. This one's a little bit more coarse. Okay. Now this does the job. There's nothing wrong with it, but it does have the potential of leaving scratches. Um, I have noticed. I mean, not deep scratches, but you know, the scratches will appear. And you can buff them out afterwards, but it's just the fact of the matter is, is if you have this, you can eliminate the scratches altogether. You don't have to worry about compounding and compounding and compounding, trying to get rid of scratches that, you know, that were avoidable in the first place. So this here, and they're the same price, by the way. This bonnet was around 25 bucks. So this bonnet here, it's usable, but I don't use it personally. Uh, so for 25 bucks, they're the same price. Uh, you can also get uh, bonnets that have the foam-style wavy uh, shape to them. Those also work too. Now, I'm going to take a gander over this way. I'm going to grab a bottle of compound. This is what you're going to need. This is 3M Perfected EX Rubbing Compound. Uh, this particular brand costs $85 Canadian. Now, there are more expensive brands out there. I actually, uh, the highest one that was at my auto parts store was around 92 bucks. Um, but I actually use this. Now, it depends on what kind of vehicle you are actually doing this to. You might need two bottles, or you might get away with one. It really is hard to say because um, I do have a auto detailing business and I have used this bottle on customers vehicles so it really isn't accurate for me to sit here and tell you guys that okay well I've gone through half a bottle of rubbing compound and I've only got half the car done well in reality I've used it on other people's vehicles too so I can't really say that you know half of this product was used on the vehicle because I have used it on others so I can't say that one bottle will do your car it really depends but if you are if you just repainted an entire vehicle you might want to buy two bottles or start off with one and see how far you can go with it because $85 for one bottle of compound is a little pricey on the pocketbook, but at the same time, you get a nice crystal clear um, after work. 
So, now the sandpaper portion of it, we are using 3M wet or dry sandpaper. 2000 grit. This is what I use. I don't go any, there's also 1500, but I don't use 1500. I go with uh, 2000. And a block. So we're going to go ahead and start wet sanding this car. We're, what we're going to need here is we're going to need a bucket. Okay, I already have some soapy water in here. Alright, this is our block. Alright, I'm going to put a new piece of sandpaper on here because this one's old. Alright, this is just a block, right? It's just a simple Bondo block. Uh, nothing fancy. You can buy these anywhere uh, for around 3 to $5. dollars. You know, there's bigger blocks you can buy as well. Doesn't really much matter as long as you have one. Uh, and if you don't have one, they're fairly uh, inexpensive to purchase. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is seeing how so I already started here. I don't want to do this quarter panel right now. And I can't do the hood because I have this battery charger sitting here. The alternator quit out of this vehicle. And the charge light is on, so I, I, the battery was dead this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a big wide open spot. I'm going to start with this quarter panel right here. Probably wondering why there's this tape here. When you start wet sanding your car, you're going to have this white milky um, clear coat running down. Okay, it's going to turn your driveway a kind of a milky white. The only thing is, is that stuff should not be left on paint. All right. Now, I've already reinstalled the bumper back on this car. The reason this tape is here is to prevent my clear coat, once I start wet sanding, my clear coat from running in behind the bumper and laying on the paint beneath the bumper. So that's why that tape is there to prevent the clear coat runs from running in there. So, like I say, when you're wet sanding a car, don't let it dry and stay on the paint. So, you know, once you've done wet sanding, rinse it off, wipe it right down with a chamois, and then proceed to the next step. Alright, so moving right along here, I got a bucket of uh, car wash um, with cold water, just a little soap in it. All right. I'm going to put my block in there, and we're going to go ahead and start wet sanding it. I have a garden hose here as well. Okay, we're going to want to, you know, rinse it off, of course, and um, uh, make sure everything's clean. And we're also going to use a an old chamois. Uh, we're going to use this to wipe down our car. And um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I already did my edges. What I've done is when before I put the taillights back in the car, I've done about... Uh, six inches of this and this. There's a mark there actually where I stopped. The reason for it is, is because I wanted to get the car back together, together, the bumper and everything. So this here has already been done along to here. So now all I have to do is this big wide open space right along here. You can really see the orange peel on this side. And so anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet sand it and then compound this whole quarter panel. I'm not going to do a couple inches at a time, I'm going to wet sand the whole thing, top to bottom, and then I'm going to compound it, and I'll show you guys how that's done. Alrighty, getting started here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the garden hose, wet down the panel, alright, just like so, I'll take my block, soapy water, I'm just going to simply go like this, at first it's not going to really do much. After a while, you're going to start seeing a bit of a white, creamy, milky color. You can see it now, right there. That's your clear coat. And what you're going to want to do, the soap helps it stay lubricated so you're not, um, you know, really being aggressive with it. It kind of makes the sandpaper just glide right along. Because uh, you don't really want to go rough or aggressive with it. And what this will do is it's sanding out the orange peel, the imperfections that are actually lying within the clear coat. So what you want to do is just keep going like this. Um, don't worry, you won't burn through. You've got lots of, if you have two or three coats of clear, you've got lots of room to play. Rinse. Just keep going along like that. You want to make sure your bucket is clean, your water is clean. Any little bit of imperfections or any bit of silt or, or any debris that is actually lying in the bucket gets on your sandpaper. You could potentially scratch the paint. 
could go beneath the clear coat and dig right into the paint and you won't be able to buff that out. You might get a scratch in the clear coat and you might be able to wet sand that out, but you want to try and avoid that as much as possible. Like I say, give it a rinse every now and then. You don't want the clear coat to dry on the car. Do up here. This will take a while. Like This isn't something that you can rush into. You can rush into it if you want to just get it done and outdoor kind of thing, but if you're actually looking for a, a, a glass appearance, you know, you're, you're going to want to sit here and actually take your time with it, not just rush into it. You know, if you're doing an entire mid-sized car, it might take you an entire weekend just to do it. Depends on how much time you can devote to it. You know, just like so. You know, you can put a little bit of muscle into it. You're not going to hurt anything. 2,000 grit sandpaper, it's basically like tissue paper. Um, it's not like 800 grit where you know, you're going to destroy your clear and your paint as soon as you touch it with it, but you know, you can put a little bit of muscle into it. So you got a bit of clear coat, alright, you're going to see that. There's nothing to be panicking about. You are going to see that when you are doing this. Alright, so just very simply keep going like this, all the way down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse this off and let it dry. And I'll show you guys what the orange peel looks like and what we got to try and minimize before we actually compound. Okay, so now that the panel is uh, somewhat dried, I want to take a few seconds here and discuss our high spots and our low spots. See this here? Right along here. Okay, see how nice and dark and matte finish that that has? It's almost like it's been painted like a flat black, right? It's kind of got that finish to it. This is what you're aiming for. If we take note over here, see where I kind of was hitting with my sandpaper, um, but see how it's all shiny? You can see all these, these specks. Okay, that's what you're trying to minimize. Now, it depends on how much clear coat you actually have on the vehicle. I was actually surprised that I got it t to actually lay flat like that with very minimal effort. Um, I have painted vehicles in the b before where I've actually had to sit there and sit there and sit there and go at it to, just to get this matte finish. Now you're going to have to do the whole car like this if you want the outcome to be perfect. If you want to have a glass appearance to it. You can kind of see up here okay, where I've missed. All right, there's this ridge here, so that's kind of the reason why I haven't been focusing a lot of attention there because with this ridge here, you're going to have a bit of a distortion effect anyway, so I really don't wet sand a lot near edges like that. I kind of just get as close to it as I can and just buff it and then, you know, it looks good enough in my opinion. But every flat surface, like here for example, I always pay uh, most attention to that. Uh, specific area because that's what you're going to see uh, the most. Now the ridge of course you're going to see a, a bit of a distortion when you're looking at it so I don't really focus a lot of time on stuff like that but this is what you're aiming for. Nice and flat. Nice and flat. No specs. Okay? No specs. If you move, if I move along over here see all that? That is all orange peel right there. All the shiny parts. We've got to get rid of that. That's all got to be wet sanded out. So when we got the whole panel looking like this, then we can go ahead and compound it. Okay, so when you have your panel just like this, straight across, okay, nice flat, dull, matte finish. This is exactly what you want. What you're going to want to do now is take your compound. Now you could go ahead and just apply the compound directly to the bonnet. I find personally that will, once you turn your polisher on, that it's going to you know, splatter uh, compound all over the place and you're going to have a big enough mess as it is so um, I just find in my personal opinion that if I just take my compound and um, I guess it would help if it was open first I just take my compound and apply it to a an applicator and then put, directly apply it to the car kind of like as if you were waxing it alright so I'm just going to go ahead and apply it just a small part, just so that I can uh, demonstrate to you guys how this is done. 
I'm going to apply some, and I'm going to leave some on the, the applicator as well because when I start uh, uh, polishing it, it's I'm going to want to put another layer on. So just like that, and add a little more. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take my polisher to this. Uh, I have a fresh microfiber cloth waiting. And we're going to go ahead and polish the shine back into this car. And there we pretty well have it. Absolutely phenomenal shine. Now if you're using a bonnet like I am, you'll notice that there is actually a bolt uh, with a nut that actually holds the bonnet to my polisher. So you want to make sure if you have this kind of a setup, you're going to want to have it on an angle because if you actually go flat right against the car, you could end up noticing that that nut will actually drill right into your paint. And that uh, makes for a very, very awful day. Uh, it'll teach your neighbor's children, who are about five and seven years old, some new words that they didn't know was in the English language before. And you just continue on with the rest of the car. Um, it is recommended that you do panel by panel, so don't go and wet sand the whole car. What you should do is just panel by panel. Uh, a lot of auto body guys might tell you that. Some might say, go ahead and wet sand the whole car. It doesn't really much matter, but you should do panel by panel. And just take your time at it, and that's all there is really to it. Great shine. Alright, so that's pretty well it for that. Uh, both these doors have been done. The passenger door has been done a couple weeks ago. Um, now, if uh, for whatever reason you may notice that it's a little hazy in some areas or that the fact of the matter that it, um, it kind of sunk back into the clear coat if any of that makes sense to anybody um, no big deal you don't have to wet sand any further it just means that you haven't compounded it enough yet um, so just go ahead and add it again if we take note right here along this um, the slip here where the actual you know where it actually bevels out like this um, it's kind of a little hazy right here so it kind of needs a little bit more compound there, um, but other than that, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it doesn't have to be wet sanded; it just has to be buffed out more. And um, as of course, all this here is all excess clear coat that has ran off the car when you were wet sanding. Okay, there's a reason why I had this masking tape here so that none of that actually ran in behind my bumper. I don't want that. So make sure always first and foremost you wipe this off. It's not good for your paint, it can actually cause some damage, so make sure you get it off there. It can stain the existing clear coat, so wipe it off thoroughly, rinse it off. When you're done wet sanding and compounding the vehicle, it is a good idea to wash it, because it is going to be dirty anyway. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of information. Hope you guys aren't partying too hard. And if you are, that's okay too. We'll catch you back here next weekend. Take care.